Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Unit Builder video. It's Spire Emblem's 30th year anniversary, and in celebration of this milestone, we've got a crazy new banner featuring young versions of some of your original FE favorites. Like with most special hero banners, we've got a new Tempest Trial event that's about to start tomorrow, and that means that we've got a new free unit on the horizon. Say hello to young Minerva. <laughs> Yes, it looks like Minerva is finally getting some attention and wowee, this is one hell of an out. Let's pull up her stats and take a look at what she comes with. At 5 stars level 40, Minerva's neutral stats read as HP 40, Attack 36, Speed 37, Defense 35, and Resistance 19. And of course, because she is our free unit, she will be locked to neutral stats. Now, that being said, Holy cow, she's got a fantastic stat spread, especially for a free flying unit. And I have to make this distinction because month after month after month, we've been getting these free flying units, all of which happen to be male, who have consistently been shafted in terms of their base stats and skill sets. And yet, despite this trend, we get a free female flyer, and suddenly she's got a personal weapon, a personal skill, and a great stat spread. Am I salty? Oh, you better believe I am, but I will get off my soapbox so that we can actually talk about these stats, cause damn, she is excellent. 40 HP is a solid place to start, and with 35 base defense, she's definitely going to be able to take a hit or two. You could certainly invest in her defense and turn her into a flying fortress, much like Altina. However, unlike Altina, Minerva's got some excellent speed to support her solid base attack. 36 base attack is a very great place to be at when you remember that she's got a personal weapon. And 37 speed is incredibly potent, as it allows players the option of investing in her speed for maximum player phase potential. The only stat that's lacking here is her resistance. 19 res is pretty pathetic, but also very common amongst most wyvern units. In summary, Minerva's got a lot of potential here, and players are going to be able to try quite a number of different builds and playstyles with her. Now, moving on, in her weapon slot, Minerva's got her personal weapon, the Dragoon Axe. With 16 might, this weapon starts off with a built-in slaying effect, meaning it lowers her special cooldown cost by 1 point. On top of that, if the enemy is at full HP at the start of combat, she gains plus 4 to all her stats and inflicts guard on the enemy per hit. This is a very nice weapon, and with her base speed, she's got the potential to outspeed quite a few units and really make the most out of her weapon's effect. Now, jumping over to her special, she comes with Draconic Aura. It has a cooldown cost of 3 and scales its damage off of Minerva's attack. While this slot is flexible, given her stat spread, this is a pretty solid special for her to come with in her base kit. Also keep in mind that because of her weapon slaying effect, Draconic Aura now has a cooldown cost of 2 instead of 3. Moving on in her A slot, Minerva's got another personal skill, Dragoon Shield. When equipped, it neutralizes any effective against flying bonuses, making her immune to archers and similar weapon effects. And on top of that, it grants her a flat plus 3 to her attack, speed, and defense, the 3 stats she already excels in. This is a fantastic skill for her, though it does compete against other popular A skills like Swift Sparrow 3 or Sturdy Impact, it's a great way to increase her base stat total and allow her to go up against archers. Alright, and lastly in her base kit she comes with Flyer Formation 3 in her B slot, which grants her the ability to warp to a space adjacent to any flying allies within a 2 tile radius, perfect for any Flyer emblem teams. And that is it. She is fast, she's strong, she's tanky, she's resistant to arrows, and she's mobile. She's got everything that literally every male flyer that we've gotten over the past few months wishes they could have. <laughs> that being said, let's finally whip out some builds for her and see how we can add to the excellence that we've been given. As per usual, our first build today is a budget build designed to play to her strengths with minimal investment. It should come as no surprise that we're keeping her entire base kit intact. However, I will add in a few alternatives when we get to each respective skill. For that reason, let's jump over to her assist skill and just plug in reposition. It's easily the most popular choice for assist skills and especially among flyer emblem teams. It offers the most versatility and allows her to shuffle her allies around. 
Jumping over to her C skill, we've got quite a few options. When it comes to a budget friendly C skills, I'm almost always going to recommend either a smoke skill or a wave skill. As far as smoke skills go, you really can't go wrong with either option. Attack smoke is an easy way to bolster her defenses on the enemy phase. On the other hand, speed smoke is another great alternative as it'll help ensure that she's able to double even the fastest of enemies. Or at the very least, prevent herself from being doubled. Now as far as wave skills go, we did just get a free Bartra last month, and so Odd Attack Wave is definitely available in case you want to beef up her already impressive attack stat. If not, I'd definitely consider a wave skill in defense or speed for the same reasons mentioned previously. Moving on to her Sacred Seal, we've got a number of options to play with given the flexibility to her kit. Steady Posture 2 is my preferred choice as it provides Minerva with plus 4 speed and defense on the enemy phase, allowing these two stats to get a little closer to her high base attack. However, it's worth mentioning that Sturdy Stance 2 is one of the free Sacred Seals we get from this month's Tempest Trial, and so if you're able to grind it out, Sturdy Stance 2 is another viable alternative to grant Minerva plus 4 attack and defense on the enemy phase. Honestly. Any skill that grants her more additional attack, speed, or defense is perfectly fine for her. Okay, and that is it for our budget build. It's fairly straightforward and does give her a slight preference for the enemy phase, but with a stat spread like hers, she's honestly viable in both phases. She's perfectly flexible in that respect. Now, moving on, I tried my best to whip up a second build for her without changing too much from her base kit. For this build in particular, we're largely going to center our skills around our special, Gale Force. With a cooldown cost of 5, Gale Force is a very fun special that grants Minerva an extra turn once it activates after combat. I'm a huge fan of Gale Force strats. I personally think that Tibarn is one of the best units for Gale Force, but unlike Tibarn, Minerva's got some incredibly good speed and and defense to help her double on the player phase. What's also worth noting is that thanks to the Dragoon Axe, Gale Force's cooldown cost is reduced from 5 to 4, making it that much easier for her to activate. Speaking of which, this is probably a good time to examine the Sacred Seal I picked out for her, Heavy Blade 3. As one of the most coveted seals, this skill allows the unit to gain double the special charges per attack so long as your unit's attack is greater than the foe's. 55 attack is a really great starting point for an unmerged unit, and it only gets higher once you're fully merged her up, making her a fantastic choice for this skill. Now in her C slot, I decided to plug in Air Orders, under the assumption that she would be in a team of full flyers. Air Orders grants any flying allies within two spaces the ability to warp to a space adjacent to a flying ally within two spaces. It's convoluted to explain, but movement skills are one of the greatest assets exclusive to flying units, as it really allows them to, well, fly across the map with ease. Uh, their value cannot be understated. Now, in case you plan to fit her in a mixed team composition, you can replace her B and C skills with aerobatics and ground orders, respectively. Both skills function identically to their previous counterpart, but grants them the same movement capabilities when near infantry, cavalry, and armored allies. Lastly, and I know I'm gonna get some heat for this, um, I thought it would be fun or perhaps funny to mention that if you still have that free Altina that we got last month lying in your barracks, Minerva is a great candidate to inherit attack and defense oath from her. Uh, Yes, I get it, she's a mythic unit and lots of people are happy she won, but there's also a good chunk of the player base that just doesn't care for her and we're quick to fodder her off. So. Minerva's a great option in case you just want to inherit that skill from her. <laughs> anyway, that is it for this build. Again, we didn't make very many tweaks, but the reality is that Minerva doesn't need a whole lot of investment in order to perform well. Sure, you could give her Swift Sparrow or Sturdy Impact, but I feel like with how expensive good skills are nowadays, I just don't see any need in replacing her A skill since it's already so good. Alright, and lastly, here are what her stats look like when fully merged. Keep in mind, the stats shown on screen don't account for Dragoon Shield, so if you do plan on merging her up and keeping her A skill, you can definitely look forward to adding plus 3 to her attack, defense, and speed. My god, is she good. Anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you were able to get something out of it. Um, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you like the content you see, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as it does help with the YouTube's algorithm. And lastly, if you haven't already, consider joining our Discord server. We share memes, build units, and talk about anything and everything Fire Emblem related. 
Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy saving, happy summoning, and take care.